hit me. From Studio P in Sausalito, the home of the hit, it's time for... Suckatash. Yes, Suckatash, the comedy soundcast soundcast featuring snippets from comedy... Soundcasts. And also interviews with comedians, comedian soundcasters, and other showbiz folk. And now, here's your host, internationally recognized comedy soundcast soundcaster, Mark... Hersha. Mark. Hersha. There you are, right on time. I just got here myself, actually. If you don't recognize these dulcet tones, it's me, Mark Hersha, creator, executive producer, and your host for this episode 322 of Suckatash, the comedy soundcast, soundcast. And what does that mean? Our main focus is to shine a favorable light on the world of comedy soundcasts, or podcasts, if you insist, usually by playing clips of a variety of shows, but sometimes by chatting with fellow soundcasters or other people in the business of show. When I say we, that's not the royal we. I'm referring both to myself and my kindly well-versed co-host Tyson Saner. Unlike traditional co-hosts, Tyson and I don't often appear together on our episodes. Instead, we've found that we can crank out these shows every week if we divide and conquer the task by listening to soundcasts and clipping out bite-sized segments to share with you individually. So, this week's my week, next week will be Tyson. Last week, for example, Tyson was hosting Epi 321 entitled Summer Closeout Clips and dealt out a trio of clips from Last Week on Earth with Ben Gleib, Best Friends Back, All Right, and The Fuckery with Leslie Jones and Lenny Marcus. In case you were somewhere last week where soundcasts aren't available, you can still get Epi 321 and a wide variety of soundcast distribution points, which include Apple and Google Podcasts, Spotify, SoundCloud, Stitcher, Amazon Music, Audible, iHeartRadio, PodBay, PodChaser, and of course, always on our home site, at SuckatashShow.com, where you can find our entire archive of 11 and a half years of these shows. As for this week's show, which I'm calling Interesting Behaviors, I've got clips from My Neighbors Are Dead, the Doug Stanhope podcast, Sarah Halstead's Drinking During Business Hours, and Were You Raised by Wolves? This episode is brought to you by our fictitious, non-paying sponsor, Henderson's Pants, and their seasonally appropriate Leaf Behind Pants. I've also got the Tweet Sack, where we acknowledge folks that have used our at Suckatash show handle in their socials, during which, by the way, I'll be reading an actual email, which we just got in. And then there's even a call into our Suckatash and Runaway Truck hotline that we will get to later on in the show. That is a lot for me to do. I better get started. This program deals with themes of an adult nature and is intended for a mature audience. Last time we checked in with the soundcast called My Neighbors Are Dead was a little over a hundred episodes ago when Tyson clipped it in Epi 219. I actually reviewed the show back in 2017 for the then Splitsider.com and a quote from my review is still up on their home site at MyNeighborsAreDead.com where I wrote, quote, I wish I'd thought of that, unquote. And I still do, by the way. I wish I'd thought of the concept. The brain fever of Adam Peacock, MNAD, chats up the lesser-known characters from scary movies. He's had a lot of comics and others pop in to voice the horror movie side characters. But recently, Patton Oswalt, who I swear I will get in front of the Succotash mics one of these days, was on as truck dispatcher Frank Ludd. And his take on one of his company's hapless drivers, Ed, who made the mistake of stopping to pick up a, quote, hippie chick, as he put it, and barely escaped with his life. Here's how part of it went down, and see if you can recognize the movie from the detail that Patton lays down. Just as I'm about to call up the, the uh, highway patrol, go check on Ed, who comes running in the office, dripping sweat, but Ed. Yeah. I was like, oh, hey, go get back in your truck. And he goes, no, no, truck ain't here. Truck ain't here, Frank. I said, like, yeah. what are you talking about? He goes, well, I was driving out out on uh, H- Hotel Whiskey 17, and this girl, a hippie girl, come running out, mm-hmm. and she's co- he said she's covered in blood. Yeah. She just covered in blood, and then um, he said a fat man wearing a lady face, 
and with a with a chainsaw was running after her. And he thought, oh, it's prop, you know, for a second, he's like, it's one of these damn protesters. They protest in the war or something. It's one of them weird street theater things, right? Sure, sure yeah. And, uh, but the next thing you know, he goes, I, I, run, I ran over a hitchhiker. Then the, the, uh, the, the hippie girl got in my cab of my truck. The lady face guy starts sawing up the, the dang door. Uh-huh. He he said he come out the other side. He grabbed a wrench. He threw it at the lady face guy's head. Yeah, and and the guy went down. And then he said he ran all the way back from Highway 17 all the way back to the office. I guess him Black Betty has kicked in along with the adrenaline. You know what I mean? Because this guy right. Ed was a Ed was a hefty feller. He's a he's a meaty some bitch, and he yeah. he just ran all the way back. And I said, well, you got a truckload of chickens cooking out there, mm-hmm. and uh, it's ten o'clock in the morning now. Them things is gonna be, you know, uh, dying, and uh, and stinking up. He goes, well, I, you know, there's a. The last thing I saw was the lady face. The the hippie girl got in a pickup truck, mm-hmm. and but they's always doing that. Hippie girls, they'll jump in anything, you know. Yeah. And and she drove off in the pickup truck, probably like a a, a musician. I'm thinking was in the pickup truck. They've always them have trucks. Girls, they look. They say, oh, there's a is there a musician in that pickup truck that's what you know I, my daughter do that all the time and i'd oh good lord i'd i'd get so angry but that's a whole listen she what is important is he said the last thing is ed talking now yeah he said he looked back he said the lady face man was doing a dance in a circle mm-hmm. and waving the the, uh, the the saw up in the sky like he's attacking the sun or something mm-hmm. and he's like i ain't you know i ain't I ain't part of that. And, um, you know, he, I, I have a friend down Louisiana. He has a saying, I don't know if you ever heard it. He says, don't go messing. It's a friend of mine down there. He's, that's I actually thing. know that don't, guy very well. Oh, you, oh, you talked to him? Uh, yeah. Don't go messing. I know that saying very well. well. I agree with that a hundred percent. And I, yeah. and I, as angry as I was at Ed and it, it was bad. We had to, we did have to lay him off because, you know, you take that look, there, the the side of his truck was marked up, okay? Sure, yeah. But for all we know, again, the way he gobbled them Black Bettys, he might have hallucinated the whole dang thing. You know, a man and a lady face. I think, you know, here's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking the man was tired. Ed was tired and horny, and he didn't know which way to go. The horniness got so big that he conjured up a blood-covered hippie chick and a fat lady face man. Mm-hmm. Because his, the the black Bettys had got to his balls and said, "Look, let's let's give you the biggest buffet we can, and we'll just lay it out here on the highway for you." Yeah, and and I can't I can't give a, I can't give a a truck full of steer or or steel or refrigerators to a guy like that, you know? Yeah, get you. so I've always felt bad about that. I had to lay him off. I feel bad. Well, did you recognize some of the characters and situations from the Texas Chainsaw Massacre? I bet you did. You can't go wrong with My Neighbors Are Dead, It's Always Funny, and Adam Peacock, I still wish I'd thought of the damn idea first. Normally, Tyson and I come across the Soundcast we clip pretty much the same way you and people you know might. We scan the scads and scads of shows that are out there and see what captures our fancy about one show or another. Sometimes it's a familiar name or a face. Occasionally, it's shows that share a similar theme, and often it's a bit of a crapshoot. There are plenty of shows that I've listened to that I just end up not finding a viable clip to play, or the sound quality's off, or whatever. In the case of this next clip, however, it was a comedian buddy of mine, Rich Chasler, and the surprise announcement via his socials that he had proposed to comedian Sarah Halstead. That's when I learned that in addition to soon becoming the future Mrs. Chasler, now, I don't know if she's actually going to change her name, that she's also the host of Sarah Halstead's Drinking During Business Hours. Her usual MO on the show is to crack open a bottle of vino and kick back with what she calls a diverse line of creatives about their life's journey, passions, and what might lead them to drink during business hours. In this case, after having taken a couple of weeks off from dropping new episodes, Sarah is back this week for episode 47, and her guest is none other than the future Mr. Halstead, Rich Chasler. 
Um, so now what? We're getting married. Now what do we do? Um, I, well, then I guess we uh, have to do that the stuff you do when you get married, I suppose. Plan. Okay. Argue. Um, no, we haven't we, had a fight yet. We actually don't argue, do we? I, we're supposed to have a fight, aren't we? It depends on what. What do you what, what do you want to fight about? I just I can't find anything to fight about. I don't want to go to strip clubs for a bachelor party. Okay, that's not going to be a fight. Um, arguing about how you load a dishwasher <laughs> is not worth a fight. Um, so I don't I don't understand that. I, what know, do you want to fight about? Well, let's kind of go to the beginning of how this started. We have two different mm. stories of how this started. Oh, yeah, and what, you, you love wine, and you're a wine collector, and we're drinking a nice uh, bottle of Sauvignon Blanc by Dashwood today. It's beautiful. From New Zealand. And, you know, that's something that, that bonded us, sort of bonded us from the beginning, sort of. I mean, I say sort of because I wasn't quite, in the beginning, I didn't really know about you, you know? I mean, you kind of came on strong, Rich. I didn't come on strong. I asked pertinent questions. You asked, is there a Mr. Sarah within the first three minutes of conversation with me? You want to know why that's a pertinent question? Because if you said yes, that would have been the last question I asked. <laughs> you don't waste your time. What? Who's got time? <laughs> what I am like I, that. nine? I like that. No, I mean, you did not really waste any <laughs> You didn't waste any time. I didn't want to waste any time. You were very special, and you were very beautiful, and I found you intriguing and magnetic, and so I just wanted to know out of the gate, was I going to waste any time if I tried to, you know, get you to have an ice cream cone or, you know, so I just needed to know. I hate ice cream. Yeah, that is true. Um, but I didn't know that then, <laughs> you know, so I just needed to know coming in, like, is there a Mr. Sarah? No, there's not. But you don't want any part of me, you said. Well, I, you know, was coming out of something. And before that, I was in something. And, you know, I had been burned like a lot of adults yeah. and I just had made a decision. I was resolute that I would be alone for the rest of my life and happy with it. And I was quite content, you know, just chasing my dream and uh, working and diving into comedy and creative projects and, you know, just kind of fooling myself that that's all I needed and then when you meet someone that you have so much in common with and someone that is makes your life easier without even trying because they have the same interest as you and they're on the same plane as you and I just had forgotten how nice that felt. So you thought that by telling me countless times that you were not attracted to me and wanted nothing to do with well, me was the way to get me to stay. I wasn't sure that you were for real. And <laughs> I, you know, didn't, I wasn't sure about you. I understand. And I was resolute. You know, I had made up my mind that I wasn't going to be with anyone. And I didn't know at the time how much better life would be with you. So at the time, I had my, yeah, I kept you at an arm's length. Yeah, you did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you kept me serious at arm's length, like hand against my, like, do not come any closer. Yeah. In fact, you smell. You, yeah. You know? I mean, I, you, you don't, you actually smell good. You have, yeah, the pheromones were there. I did know that. Oh, baby. <laughs> but no, I just was, I didn't want to, like, you didn't want to waste your time. Right. I didn't want to waste mine. I, and I didn't want to waste yours either. my time had been wasted yes. in the past. Likewise. And I'm sure a, a lot of people can relate. Yeah. And I think when you get to be an adult, you know, and by be an adult, I don't mean in your 20s. You know, I think that by the time you hit your late 30s, mm -hmm. early 40s, you it's not that you develop a tolerance for certain things. It's that your life experience, if you've lived some, has um, acclimated you enough to know that when people are in your life that are time wasters or parasites or just, they're not serving any purpose, they're just kind of there. They're there. You know what I mean? on draining you. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you just kind of know, like, I got to move on from this, you know? Congratulations to the new couple from everyone here at Succotash. And let's raise a glass to Sarah Halstead and her now fiance, Rich Chasler. Way to go, Chaz. 
We've got a couple more clips to go, but first, here's our announcer, Bill Haywatt, and a word from Henderson's Paints. Ah, can you smell it, friends? Autumn is in the air, crisp and cool. The smell of wood smoke and the leaves turning and falling from the trees. In honor of the autumnal equinox, Henderson's Pants is pleased to introduce their new Autumn Leaf Behind Pants. Working with the fine folks at Monsanto and the latest in chlorophyll technology, Henderson's has created a pair of trousers that literally change the themselves. From the moment you slide your legs into your new autumn leaf behind pants, they begin a subtle but discernible shift in color. They start out as a pair of rather dull, run-of-the-mill tan chinos, but within hours you'll be delighted as they become more brilliantly hued in a spectrum of breathtaking colors. Greens, reds, yellows, it's like your very own legs were taking a drive through the fall splendor of Vermont. You'll want to pay close attention to your autumn leaf behind pants because within days of activation they begin to crinkle, crumple, and drop off in leaf-shaped patches onto the floor, which is why they're named as they are. The Henderson's leaf behind pants, once they'd fallen off completely, leaves you with nothing but your behind to show for it. (laughs) Originally designed for romantic country drives, Hayrides and Helga Klontz, the Amish stripper, Henderson's Autumn Leaf Behind Pants can be found inside corn mazes and haunted houses. That's Henderson's, maker of baggy drawers and granny panties since 1841. And now, back to Succotash. We are going to revisit another show that we've played before, but this is one we haven't clipped since 2013. It's the Doug Stanhope Show with the titular Doug Stanhope. Truly an original comedy voice, Doug also takes a great interest in the folks he talks to. And recently, for his 499th episode back in August, he invited comedian Christine Levine into his studio, affectionately called The Fun House, in Bisbee, Arizona. Entitled... Christine's wad of gum is cancer. They got into her bout with an upcoming operation for stomach cancer. This clip is from early in the show when Christine talks about her weight problem and other issues. I did want to go to fat camp. I wanted always to lose weight. I, 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 I mean, there was a point where like, I don't uh, mind how, being how fat. long ago is this? Because I, I, I'm guessing you must have read Jenny Pentland's book. Yeah. Yeah. Roseanne's yes. daughter and all the, that she was just, Always, you know, <laughs> yeah, shuffled off. off to either yes. fat camp or one of those All boot camps for troubled teens. Exactly, or, yeah. But they called them fat camps. They do call them fat camps. That was, yeah. Well, this is what like... we just called it fat jail. <laughs> <laughs> fat jail. <laughs> <laughs> that also is a good word for but, them, I guess. But, it, but fat camp was an actual. Mm-hmm. It's an actual thing that they did. Yeah. My cousin did go. She went to a fat camp. So this is like 20 years ago. Yeah. But she, she was like 15 and they did send her off. But I, uh, I think I, I wanted to stop being fat a while ago, maybe like four or five years ago. I don't have high blood pressure. This is another thing. Like nobody wants to, doesn't, nobody wants to help me not be fat anymore again. Cause I don't have any like health problems really. I don't have high blood pressure. Shocking. I know, but I fucking don't. Awesome. And I, uh, my cholesterol is really good. What? Yeah, yeah. it's fine. <laughs> my cholesterol is great. I just don't have any other than I am heavy and I'm carrying, you know, a lot of weight around, which is a problem that, you know, I can't like move around as good. Yeah. 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 And my bones hurt. You know, I've Mm -hmm. got joint problems, that kind of shit. But I mean, like, is it is it hurting me? Like, I was going to ask, kill me. No. What what made you go to the doctor for this? Okay, so, yeah, I. So this is the, what I'm saying is that I just got to a point where I'm like, God damn it. I want to get out of this fucking fat suit, but my bones hurt so bad now. It makes it hard to exercise. Mm. I, I do love food. So it's hard for me to, you know what I mean? E- even when I have just vegetables around the house, I find that I'm e- eating too much and I don't know why. I don't even like this shit and I <laughs> just shove it in my mouth. So I would, so I'm like, I need help. I, I got to figure something out. So I talked to a couple people I knew who had weight loss surgery and um this is over the course of like i don't know yeah like three or four years i have slowly kind of warmed up to this idea because i always thought it was like i'm uh cheating Mm -hmm. you know what i mean or giving up 
on myself. Like, I'm not like, I can do it. I can do it. I can do anything. I, I quit smoking when I want to, I quit drinking when I want to, I, I quit doing heroin just because I was like, well, <laughs> this is a cry for help and nobody gives a shit. What do I do now? <laughs> <laughs> and my son was right. I was happy. I, my house was clean. I could move. It was great. No pain. It was fantastic. Those were good times. But yeah, I just thought I have to do something. But what? So I go ahead. I finally get good insurance. That was the whole thing. So I finally get some good insurance. And then uh, like in May, I made an appointment with uh, a weight loss guy in Tucson. And I had my first appointment with him. And he was pretty cool. And then he asked me, he said, well, you seem like you're a pretty good candidate for this. You know, he goes, but you don't have type two diabetes. That's the other thing. I don't even fucking have pre-diabetes. <laughs> no, <Jesus. laughs> no, I got tested for that. No. And he's like, you're a great candidate for this because he said that, like, I know enough about what to expect and stuff, but he said, but we need to find a reason for your insurance to. Oh, they won't just do it just because you don't want to be just fat. because. No, <laughs> isn't that wow. the sh again? <laughs> if it's not a spectacle, yep, then you're fucked. So I, so they were like, well, let's hope you have sleep apnea. And I go, I snore like a bitch. I there you go. Okay, right. I'm pretty sure that is gonna that's gonna be our end. So let's do that. It's so fucked up. I know, <laughs> right? It's so fucked up. Also heard there on the Doug Stanhope podcast is Bingo, Tracy, and Greg Shale. There's a GoFundMe, by the way, for Christine, and we have the link up at our SuccotashShow.com website if you'd like to help her out with her upcoming operation. Also, Doug Stanhope has a new audio book out on Audible.com called No Encore for the Donkey. So check that out. We're available at the App Store and on Google Play. Our last clip this week deals with the idea of etiquette and how to handle yourself in mixed company. Hosts Nick Layton and Leah Bonema have a virtual grab bag of sticky social situations and they break out some pretty practical advice how to deal with stuff. Their episode from last week is called High Tea, Overcoming Terrible Handwriting, Tipping for Gas in New Jersey, and more. The clip I've snipped deals with a few of the finer points of auto etiquette. I think it comes down to the idea of feeling that you're alone. And I think in our car, we feel like we're in a bubble. And when we feel like we're in a bubble, we feel like things outside of that bubble are sort of extraneous, almost like we're watching a movie, that these things are not part of our lives. They don't affect us. We don't affect them. And so therefore, there is no etiquette consideration required, because why would there be to these inanimate things around us that have no effect on our lives? I feel like that's what's happening. I think it would be a very interesting study. I don't know who we can get to do this research. If you follow the people who are very rude on the road, how many of them are that rude in life? And how many of them only do it because they feel they're of the anonymity? I would suspect most people do it only in their cars. And that in the office, at the play dates, at the daycare pickup, in all their other aspects of their lives even inside the supermarket, in the laundry room, at the coffee shop. I'm sure they're actually very polite and considerate. But once they get in the car, it just, uh, it all goes out the window. I would actually think that a higher percentage of those people were also that way in their real life, mm. just not as blatantly. Oh, so deep down they have dark hearts. They have dark hearts. But they're less blatant about it when they're going to Zumba. Some people are just not good drivers, and that's a different thing. But some people who are... They're just being, they don't care. They're cutting you off. They're doing what they want. And I think that all of those people have some kind of thing in their personality that you would know. They, yes, they come to Zumba late and then stand in the front. Yeah, this would be a very interesting study to see whether or not bad people are bad just in their cars or if they're just bad across the board. I think there are some people that get road rage that we couldn't have called necessarily, but maybe we could have. Yeah, but I think out there, I think next time you're driving and you feel um, compelled to maybe do something you wouldn't do on the street if you're a pedestrian. Like if you're a pedestrian, you don't like shove other people or like breathe down people's necks right behind them. Yeah, you don't walk up one inch behind them because you don't think they're walking fast enough. <laughs> right? right, like I, I hope we don't do that. 
And so like all this stuff we like we don't do outside of our cars, like we do in our cars, and like that's weird. So maybe the hope is that when we're in our cars, we'll just be more mindful to live our lives in the car the same way we live it outside of the car. And so that we are living our lives consistently in all modes of transportation. Maybe that's the hope. Yes. Now I really want to do this study. Now I'm just hot for this study. And now I do have one thing on my list, which I don't know if it's driving etiquette, but it's just a request. If you have a tow ball on the back of your car and you don't need it anytime soon, please remove it. I cannot tell you how many times I've been walking in a parking lot and I've banged my shin against one of these things, not knowing it was there. And yes, it's my fault. I should be more careful, but I'm just not anticipating a shiny thing that blends in with the background hanging off your bumper. And so it's just a request. You got a tow ball and you don't need it anytime soon. Uh, take it off if it's easy enough to take off. I'm going to add one to this. Okay. When you drive in at night, it's not high beam time if there are other cars around. Okay. I'll see your high beams at night and I'll raise you uh, when you're filling up your car at a gas station and you're done. Don't park in front of the pump when you go inside the store to buy other stuff. Oh, that just happened. And I was waiting behind this guy and I felt like he knew I was waiting and then he would just go sat there and got on his phone and I was like, I'm not even. I'm backing up. I'm going backwards into the other one because I see where this is headed and I don't want to lose my temper. Yep, I know. It's another 10 minutes. Yeah, I I don't have time for that. What's happening with that? Just pull around. Yeah, just you're done with the gas. Okay, great. There's uh, some other parking spots here that you can have. Really? Everything? Boils down. Other people. Exist. They do. They do. Believe it or not, other people exist. (sighs) And then another day, we'll talk about parking. (laughs) I don't have the emotional strength today to talk about parking. Well, we didn't talk about parking. We didn't talk about inside the car. So maybe that'll, we'll just package all that together. Well, this is one of those topics, you know, like a comet. We'll return to our solar system every so often and we'll address it again. Because inside a car will be fun because we can also discuss when you're with people that you don't know. Oh, carpooling. Mm. Oh, yeah. No, it never ends. So audience, if you have any ideas for what we should talk about the next time we talk about this topic, let us know. But hopefully we are going to make everybody a little more mindful about driving. And hopefully we are one step closer to achieving world peace. I honestly think in my top 10 things for world peace, on that top 10 is you're going to signal for 100 feet. This is how long we're going to let people know. Okay. (laughs) I would definitely have that on the list. Absolutely. Mm. That's Were You Raised by Wolves? You can find that wherever finer soundcasts are streamed and or downloaded, of course. We also have clickable links for the shows we featured this week, as well as links to the socials for the hosts and many of their guests you heard from. So just hop on over to SuccotashShow.com and you'll find everything you need right there in one neat package. You're welcome. I see we have a call into our Succotash and Runaway Truck Ramp hotline. Let's bring them in. I was very concerned about the status of the Runaway Truck Ramps here. The I-5, uh, just heading off the grapevine. You know the spot. Uh, because it's uh, all hell's broken loose up here on the I-5. Lane closure, traffic. People pulled over on the shoulders. It's, it's like Jean Luc Godard's weekend up here. It's like Mad Max. Well, I recognized Phil Larness's voice from the Chill Pack Hollywood Hour soundcast, but it concerns me that it cut off rather abruptly. We'll try to get Phil back in the final minutes of the show here. Normally, this is where I would feature the tweet sack. No, no, Tweety. I said normally. This week, however, I received an actual piece of email from a listener. So I'm going to read that and the likely response to it as well. So here goes. Real real email right here to the show. Here we go. Hi, Mark. This will probably be a blast from the past, but I stumbled across an article you did back in 2015 where you talk about podcasting as a great breeding ground for sketch comedy with Lost Moon Radio as an example. I discovered Lost Moon Radio yesterday, and I'm loving it. I also checked out Super Ego and Victrola, which are a bit more improv than I'm looking for. I'm curious what other podcast slash radio slash audio sketch comedy you'd recommend to someone with these favorites. Usually, mostly radio so far. I'm just now dipping my toe into sketch podcasts. And he mentions John Finnerman's Souvenir Program, That Mitchell and Webb Sound, The Pin, and the aforementioned Lost Moon Radio. 
finishes up his letter by saying, and I just found Succotash. If there's a best of sketch comedy episode, I can just go listen to that too. So he's asking for that. Uh, anyway, thanks, David Akala. So thanks, David. Appreciate you writing in. You know what? He linked that article that I wrote. It was from a piece I'd done uh, for HuffPost back in 2016, back when citizen journalism was still a big thing. And I was a regular <laughs> contributor to the site before they blew all of us out and said, get out of here. David brings up a good point, and I'm glad he rattled my cage. I have not been too focused on the topic of sketch comedy on Soundcast, so I will do an episode in the near future all about it. I'll track down some shows. We'll do some clips. Maybe we'll have a guest on. Who knows? Anyway, how about that? If you would like to write to me or my co-host, Tyson Saner, it is so easy. Just write to marc at succotashshow.com. Or Tyson at T-Y-S-O-N at SuccotashShow.com. If you don't know how to spell Succotash, go to the grocery store, find the canned vegetable section, and look up Succotash. We spell it the exact same way. And who knows, we may read your email on the show. Alrighty, chums, I'm getting the signal to wrap it up from no one in particular. Remember to catch my partner in soundcasting, Tyson Saner, on this same feed next week for episode 323. Oh, and I almost forgot, I am appearing on an episode of the Legal Geeks Soundcast this week. I'm not sure when it drops, but it's that show with real lawyers headed up by friend of Succotash and past guest John Gilliland and Jessica Matterson talking about legal issues that crop up in comic books, movies, and other not-so-real-world situations. Uh, they did an episode about last week's fifth episode of She-Hulk on the Disney Channel, and when the main character gets sued by her nemesis, Tatiana, for infringing on the She-Hulk trademark. Since... I actually work in the branding business when I'm not clipping soundcasts. I got called in as a kind of expert witness, if you will, as the legal eagles batted that case around. Okay, last thing. Next time you're at the grocery store and you find yourself reaching for that last bottle of Clamato juice at the same time as someone else, look them square in the eye and ask, have you heard anything good lately? If their answer is no, won't you please pass the succotash? You've been listening to Succotash, the comedy soundcast soundcast with your host, Mark Hershaw. Brought to you by Henderson's Pants and... Imagine your company's name right here. Rate us and review us at Apple and Google Podcasts. Find us on the web at SuccotashShow.com. On Spotify. On Stitcher. On iHeartRadio. On YouTube. On SoundCloud. And wherever fine soundcasts are streamed and or downloaded. Follow us on Twitter and Instagram at Succotash Show. Like us on Facebook. Email us at marc at succotashshow.com or call into the Succotash Skype line at our toll call number 818-921-7212. The number again is 818-921-7212. You can also upload clips from your favorite comedy soundcasts directly to us using our direct upload link at hightail.com slash you slash Succotash. Succotash is produced and engineered by Joe Paulino through the auspices of Studio P. Sausalito, the home of the hit. Our hosts are Mark Hershon and Tyson Saner. Our musical director is Scott Carvey. Our booth assistant is Kenny Durges. Succotash is executive produced by Mark Hershon. Until next time, I'm your loyal booth announcer, Bill Haywatt, reminding you to please pass the Succotash goodbye. This has been a Succotash Patch production.